Lemon Ras, known as the Wolf King and the Great Wolf, is the missing Primarch of the Space Wolves chapter of Space Marines. He led the Space Wolves during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy and is famous for his disdain for psychic powers and sorcery, seeing them as dishonorable in battle. In 211 millennium 31st, Ras vanished with his Varagir bodyguard after a troubling vision, leaving Bjorn the fell handed who became the first great wolf in his stead. Ras was one of the top warriors among the Primarchs, alongside Engron and Vulcan. He was fiercely loyal to the Emperor and saw himself as his enforcer, known to the forces of chaos as the Brawler. Rumors suggest Ras might be behind the return of the Space Wolves 13 company after 10,000 years of battling chaos in the warp during the 13th Black Crusade. The Astra Militarum has named several battle tanks after him, most notably the Lehman Ras tank and its variants like the Lehman Ras Demolisher. Welcome lore lovers to Lionbrug, your portal to the vast tapestry of fantastical lore from across the realms. Today we delve into the storied saga of Lehman Ras, the Wolf King of Fenris and his mighty companions. Join us as we uncover the legends and battles that define this iconic figure of the Warhammer 40k universe. The Space Wolves are one of the most renowned chapters of the Adeptus Astartes, celebrated across the galaxy. Founded by the Emperor over 10,000 years ago, they were one of the original 20 Space Marine Legions created for the Great Crusade, the campaign to reconquer the human settled galaxy and establish the Imperium. Before the Great Crusade, Terra suffered through the Age of Strife, a dark era marked by rampant warp storms. The Emperor, trapped on Terra, could only prepare his forces for the future reconquest, while human worlds across the galaxy fell into chaos without his guidance. During the Age of Strife, the Emperor initiated the Primarch project, aiming to create 20 superhuman beings to serve as his generals and administrators. These Primarchs were designed with unique skills and powers, combining advanced genetic science with the arcane power of the warp. However, they were scattered across the galaxy by warp forces before their creation was complete. To salvage the project, the Emperor used the Primarch genetic material to create the Space Marine Legions. His scientists developed artificially cultured organs from this material which could be implanted into adolescent humans to transform them into transhuman warriors. While Space Marines were less powerful than the Primarchs, they became the Emperor's greatest warriors, embodying the genetic legacy of their Primarch progenitors. While most implants were similar across the legions, subtle differences arose from their unique gene fathers. Thus, the warriors of each legion reflected their Primarch's particular strengths. The Space Wolves implants, known as the Canix Helix, came from Lehman Ras. Initially, the Emperor had no knowledge of the Primarch's whereabouts or survival. It was only during the Great Crusade that he gradually recovered them, now adults shaped by the various civilizations and harsh environments where their pods had landed. The Primarch of the Space Wolves, Lemon Russ, landed on the icy death world of Fenris, his pod crashing into a mountain. Despite the harsh climate, which would have killed an ordinary infant, he survived. A mother thunder wolf, sensing a kindred spirit in the feral child, raised him alongside her cubs. Imperial records, largely derived from Noril, the Elder Saga, the Ascension of the Wolf King, recount that during a particularly harsh hell winter, a Fenrisian hunting party discovered the wolf child. In the ensuing confrontation, the mother wolf and most of her cubs were killed. The young Primarch, in a rage, killed a dozen warriors with his bare hands to protect his surviving packmates, Freki and Jerry. Recognizing the youth as human, a tribesman called for peace. The Primarch, understanding the gesture, ceased his attack. Hunters took him and his wolf companions to King Tangir of the Ras tribe. Seeing the boy's potential, Tangir welcomed him into his household to be raised as a warrior, a decision that proved wise over time. Among his own kind for the first time, Leman quickly mastered the skills of a warrior, learning to speak and wield primitive weapons like iron axes and swords. 
Known for his laughter and songs, he gradually realized he was more human than Wolf, yet superior to both, when he disarmed the King's Guard champion and handed back his axes during their third sparring session, King Tangier recognized his death and greatness. Le Mans soon spoke Fenrisian low gothic eloquently, and King Tangier gave him the name Le Mans of the Rus. As he matured, he led the tribe to countless victories. Upon Tangier's death, Le Mans took the throne, becoming a living legend on Fenris. Word of his fame eventually reached someone who desperately sought news of his last sons. Le Mans Rus's early years are shrouded in legend with tales of him turning back armies, uprooting trees and wrestling mammoths. When King Tangier died, Le Mans naturally succeeded him, uniting all Fenrisian tribes with his wisdom and martial prowess. Known as the Wolf King, his authority was undisputed and a truce existed between man and wolf in his kingdom. His court was filled with fierce warlords and beautiful maidens and his exploits became widely known. As tales of the Wolf King's conquest spread, they caught the attention of the Emperor. In 819 Millennium 30, during the Great Crusade, the Emperor's fleet approached Fenris and recognized the Wolf King as one of the missing Primarchs. The Emperor descended to Fenris, finding Le Mans Ras, who had united the tribes and forged his kingdom. The Emperor, disguised in a plain robe and clothed in psychic runes, entered Ras's hall. His powerful presence made even the sharp-eyed and sober natives, as well as the great Fenrisian wolves, shrink back. Ras refused to honor him as the master of mankind, knowing the Emperor had to prove his worth through a challenge. If the Emperor lost, he would serve the king for a year. The first challenge was an eating contest. While the Emperor ate impressively, Ras consumed three entire aurochs, winning the challenge. Next was the drinking bout, which Ras also won by draining the entire feast dry. The Emperor, frustrated, accused Rast of being a mere gluten and drunkard. For the third challenge, Rast proposed combat. The Emperor revealed his true form, standing tall in golden power armor. He defeated Rast with a powerful blow from his power glove. When Rast regained consciousness, he acknowledged his defeat and pledged loyalty to the Emperor. After taking Rast from Fenris, the Emperor quickly taught him the ways and technology of the Imperium. Within weeks, Ras was ready to lead the 6th legion of space marines, the Space Wolves. He was given a suit of power armor and a legendary frost blade Mjalnar, forged with teeth from the great kraken Gormen Jarl. Ras led the Space Wolves into battle, always at the forefront, his arrival marked by howling of his pack. Following the brutal Gena scouring when an entire planet's population was slaughtered, the Emperor censured the World Eater's Legion and ordered them to stop using the Butcher's Nails implants. Two Primarchs attempted to convince Engron to cease this dangerous practice. The first arrived soon after Engron was unwillingly rescued from Nuceria, and the second, nearly a century later, found it too late to prevent the unfolding tragedy. Shortly after the Gena massacre, Le Mans Ras was tasked by the Emperor to bring the World Eaters to heal. The two legions met at Malkoya, near the dead city of the same name. The World Eaters, battered from their campaign, faced the assembled Space Wolves. During their parley, Angron, covered in blood and fresh wounds, and Le Mans Ras in his storm-colored battle plate, stood before their armies. Engron wielded Widowmaker, his first axe, which broke that day, while Ras carried Krakenmau, his immense chain blade. Engron rejected Ras's authority and warned him to leave. Ras, undeterred, stated that the Emperor demanded an end to the implantation surgeries and massacres. The World Eaters were to be escorted to Terra for the Butcher's Nails removal. Tension escalated, and though it is unclear who fired the first shot, the two legions clashed without their Primarch's orders. This confrontation became known as the Night of the Wolf, or Gena scouring in Imperial archives. Both legions claimed victory but felt they had lost. The battle was bloody and inconclusive, with the World Eaters refusing to return to Terra or seize their implants. Le Mans Ras, accompanied by his Fenrisian wolves, Freki and Jerry, played a significant role during the turbulent times of the Horus Heresy. Ras's conquest and his Space Wolves legions successfully brought many worlds into Imperial compliance which took them to the far reaches of the galaxy. Gradually, all 20 Primarchs reunited with the Emperor, leading their respective legions. Lord Lovers, sorry for this interruption, I am here to remind you to hit that like button if you are enjoying this deep dive into the lore, and if you are new here, consider subscribing to Lion Drag for more epic tales and lore discussions from your favorite universes. The Horus Heresy began when Horus, the War Master of the Great Crusade and favored son of the Emperor, 
turn to the ruinous powers, aiming to usurp the Emperor's throne. This schism tore the nascent Imperium apart, pitting Space Marines against Space Marine, and Primarchs and Legions chose sides. Horus ensnared nine Space Marine Legions through coercion, deceit and corruption. Though some Legions initially stood aside, the evil within Horus soon became evident, leading to regret among those who had sided with him. Horus pledged allegiance to the Dark Gods of Chaos in exchange for immense power. Despite the treachery of many brothers, Leman Ras remained loyal to the Emperor. The Space Wolves took part in notable actions during the Horus Heresy, but detailed records are scarce, and much of what is known is shrouded in legend. The Space Wolves, though absent during the Battle of Terra, were crucial in the Heresy's early stages, particularly in their conflict with the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion. In contrast to the barbaric Space Wolves, the Thousand Suns Legion pursued lore and knowledge, especially concerning the Warp and Psychic Sorcery. Their Primarch, Magnus the Red, was a powerful Psyker with copper skin, fiery hair and a single eye. Magnus's strength was said to rival Ras's, but he focused on learning rather than battle. Ras, distrusting sorcery, feared Magnus's pursuits. However, the Emperor dismissed Ras's concerns, valuing Magnus as one of his sons and recognizing his own unmatched psychic power. As the Horus Heresy approached, Magnus sent a psychic warning to the Emperor about Horus' corruption. To reach the Emperor, Magnus disrupted the psychic wards around the Imperial Palace, risking a chaotic assault on Terra. The Emperor, angered by Magnus' disregard for the Council of Nicaea's ban on sorcery, believed Magnus was the true traitor. The Thousand Suns' continued use of sorcery prompted the Emperor to send Ras to Prospero to bring Magnus to Terra. Ras, convinced of Magnus' guilt, was easily manipulated by Horus, who incited Ras's rage and led him to believe the Emperor wanted a full-scale assault on Prospero. The Space Wolves, aided by the Sisters of Silence and the Imperial Army, attacked, devastating Prospero and Tisca, the City of Light. The Thousand Suns, despite their wisdom, could not withstand the Space Wolf's fury. In the final battle, Magnus used sorcery to enhance his strength, enraging Ras. Ras, deeming this dishonorable, broke Magnus's back over his knee. Magnus, calling for aid from Zench, the Chaos God, escaped with his surviving legion into the warp. The Space Wolves and Thousand Suns harbored a deep-seated grudge, though the Space Wolves played no major role in the Heresy's concluding battles. This conflict marked the beginning of their ages-long blood feud. After the raising of Prospero, Leman Ras, the Primarch of the Space Wolves, ordered his legion to regroup within Alexis Nebula. However, Horus, the Warmaster who had turned traitor, secretly deployed the Alpha Legion to ambush the weakened and outnumbered Space Wolves. The Alpha Legion, led by the twin Primarch Alpharius and Omegon, held a grudge against the Space Wolves and Leman Ras for their disdain towards the Alpha Legion's methods of deception and subterfuge. The Alpha Legion attacked the Space Wolves with the intent to delay them from reinforcing the Imperial defenses on Terra. Despite sending a distress call to Jagatai Khan and the White Scars, Ras received no immediate aid. The Khan, skeptical about the loyalty of the Space Wolves due to conflicting reports, chose not to intervene. Facing a seemingly hopeless situation, Ras became demoralized and isolated himself leaving First Captain Gunnar Gunnhild in command. Gunnhild led a desperate breakout attempt, but the Space Wolf split was continually harried by the Alpha Legion. Counsel from Bjorn the One-Handed, a young and esteemed pack leader, helped Ras reconcile with his past as the Emperor's executioner, rejuvenating his resolve. Ras rejoined the battle, leading a fierce defense as Gunnhild and his crew valiantly sacrificed themselves to buy time. Despite their efforts, the Alpha Legion began to gain the upper hand. At the height of the conflict, Elite Lernean Cataphracti Terminators of the Alpha Legion teleported abroad Ras's flagship Hrefenkel. Ras engaged in combat with Alpharius, who was disguised as one of his own Terminators. As the Alpha Legion was on the brink of victory, an unexpected intervention occurred. A fleet of Dark Angels, led by the Ramilis class Starford Chimera and commanded by Chapter Master Atalus, arrived in response of the Space Wolves' distress signals. They had determined that Space Wolves remained loyal to the Emperor. With their aid, the Space Wolves managed to force the Alpha Legion into a retreat. After the battle, Ras and his trusted warriors met with Chapter Master Atalus, 
who explained that his fleet had been dispatched 59 years before the Horus Heresy to establish outposts and had been unaware of the Galactic Rebellion. During the battle, Dark Angel's Captain Ormand infiltrated the Hrafenkel to verify the Space Wolf's loyalty. Convinced of their loyalty by their valor, Ormand informed Athalos, leading to the Dark Angel's intervention. Ras provided Athalos with a comprehensive account of the Warmaster's treachery and the broader events of the Horus Heresy. Saddened by the news, Athalos decided to return his forces to Caliban, while Ras set curse for Terra, preparing for the inevitable confrontation with Horus. During the final epic battle of the Horus Heresy, the Space Wolves were still far from the throne world during the Siege of Terra. Knowledge of the imminent arrival of two Loyalist Legions, which included the Space Wolves and the Ultramarines, would inevitably tip the balance in favor of the Loyalists. They pushed Horus at the climax of the Siege of Terra, into allowing the Emperor to personally teleport abroad his flagship, the Vengeful Spirit, in orbit over Terra in a desperate gamble to bring the terrible civil war to a swift conclusion. The two legions arrived just after the battle concluded, with Warmaster and the Blood Angel's Primarch Sanguinius killed at the hands of Horus, already dead. The Emperor himself had been mortally wounded and was later interred within the arcane life support mechanisms of the Golden Throne by Rogal Dorn. Afterwards, Leman Ras was to rage against the events that had kept him from his beloved sire. With the permanent enthronement of the Emperor came a different age for mankind. The Primarchs were warriors, generals and leaders of men, not bureaucrats and politicians, so the responsibility of ruling the Imperium in the Emperor's name passed to the High Lords of Terra. Both the High Lords and the surviving Primarchs dreaded the resurgence of chaos. Many wars were purged during a time of great retribution known as the Scouring. Throughout the galaxy, the Tainted were sought out and destroyed. Never again could the Imperium tolerate the possibility of space marine armies falling under the influence of an enemy of mankind. In accordance with the Ultramarines Primarchs Robert Quillemans seminal treatise, the Codex Astartes, the original Space Marine Legions were broken up into smaller 1,000-man chapters and the code was drawn up to redefine their role and jurisdiction within the Imperium. Before the heresy, a legion had numbered Space Marines in their tens of thousands. Under a new order, each chapter size was limited to 10 companies of approximately 100 Battle Brothers. The legion, still loyal to the Emperor, would live on as first founding chapters keeping their original names, colors and iconography. The remaining Space Marines from each Loyalist Legion were then reorganized into a number of new chapters. In each case, these second founding chapters all shared the genetic brotherhood with their first founding chapter and their Primarch. The Space Wolves were officially divided only once, creating the ill-fated Wolf Brothers chapter. Lemon Russ cared little for formal military organization and tactics ever relying on the strength and courage of his warriors to win the day. He had no intention of breaking apart his mighty legion further in accordance with his brother's wishes. Though Guilliman ostensibly agreed to the Space Wolves, retaining their 12 remaining great companies, each one still comprised many hundreds of Space Wolves and led by a captain called a Warflord, for the Wolf King would have them fight in the manner of the native tribes of Fenris, as an army of battle-hungry warriors, not a small contingent of disciplined and well-ordered troops. In this way, the Space Wolves retained their original size and power in a way matched by no other chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. Thus did the Space Wolves largely ignore the Codes Astartes, instead holding to the teachings of Ras, which still define their fighting methods to this day. In the year 211, Malinion 31st, Nearly two centuries after the Emperor's entombment on the Golden Throne, Leman Ras mysteriously vanished during a feast on Fenris known as the Feast of the Emperor's Ascension. His departure was sudden and preceded by a vision that seemed to call him away. Leman Ras left instructions with his closest companions and departed with his bodyguard, leaving behind only Bjorn the Fell-Handed, who later became a dreadnought and the keeper of Ras's tail. After Ras's disappearance, the Space Wolves conducted several great hunts to find their last Primarch. These were expansive endeavors across the galaxy, spanning many years and involving battles against various threats. Bjorn eventually led the Space Wolves into the Eye of Terror itself, where he was grievously wounded and entombed within a Dreadnought. 
Despite their efforts, they found no sign of us. Across Mylenia and many great hunts, the Space Wolves achieved numerous victories but failed to locate Lemar Ras. Each hunt began with visions received by the Rune Priest, indicating Ras's guidance from afar. Ras promised through these visions that he would return in time for the Wolf Time, a period he foretold as the final battle against the forces of chaos believed by many to coincide with the end of the 41st millennium. Reports of the 13th Great Company's return from the Eye of Terror during the 13th Black Crusade in 999 millennium 41st sparked speculation about Lehman Ras's imminent return. This event hinted at a significant development in the ongoing saga of the Space Wolves. Many Space Wolves believe that the Wolf Time is approaching, a time when Lehman Ras will return to lead them in the final battle against Chaos. This belief fused their determination and readiness for what lies ahead. Despite Ras's absence, his legacy continues to inspire the Space Wolves, shaping their traditions and defining their relentless pursuit of justice and honor in the Emperor's name. And there you have it, lore lovers. If you've enjoyed this exploration of Lemon Ras and his companions, remember to like, share and subscribe to Lion Drag for more rifting lore content. Join our Discord community, link below to engage in discussions and share your own tales for the vast cosmos of lore. Until next time, may the Emperor guide your path.